Paul Cook family where homeschool is life and having a teachable spirit is our number one goal. Today I wanted to sit down and quickly chit chat with you through um, what we are using for homeschool curriculum for my kindergartner, Savannah. Um, I realized that I had not done curriculum videos and when the start of the year came along and that is because we recycle or reuse everything we have. I would like to think that we have legacy curriculum um, and that was done intentionally and my goal is to use all that we have as much as we can. So, so many of my resources are the same. You've seen them before with a few um, extra things or new things thrown into the mix here and there. So I, I just, I don't know, I guess that was why I hadn't done a curriculum video. But I get so many questions about what I am using that I thought it might be helpful to just go ahead and do a curriculum video even though I'm already in the middle of the year. So I am going to just quickly show you what I'm using for Savannah who is my five-year-old. She is in kindergarten right now um, and I would say probably more like kindergarten slash first grade. Um, yeah, I also sometimes have a challenge. Sometimes I feel a little strange about doing curriculum videos just based on how I viewed things. Um, and I know if I'm being 100% transparent with you, um, I know what it's like to watch a curriculum video because you have a first grader and watch what someone else is using for their first grader and you just automatically feel like your first grader needs to be there or even feeling like your first grader may be a little bit um, further along and so you feel a sense of relief like oh my first graders advanced you know so um, I just yeah I have special feelings about that but with that set aside I just decided that this would probably be more helpful than harmful. <laughs> so I'll just show you, show you what we're using. Remember, this is a lot of mishmash of stuff that we have that I refuse to let go, some of it, um, until I use it all up, um, or just things that we're reusing. So let me just get into it. I am actually going to start with language arts. Let's start with language arts. For Savannah, um, this is our book year, so books are huge on our to-do list, um, and she has excelled in that thus far, and so reading is our number one priority around here. But as far as breaking down the bits and pieces of grammar and sentence structure and stuff like that, I'm all for it, but we just move through it very slowly at a slow, nice Pace to make sure that she doesn't miss anything. Um, we are using the good and the beautiful as a spine, of course. Um, last year, we used the Level K course as her um, stretch material, and we used the Pre-K as her spine material, kind of, sort of. Um, so we're redoing it again using the level k as her spine material and level one as her stretch material she's really more at level one for her spine probably should be but like i said i don't feel any sense of urgency to rush any of my children through these things because i feel like these elementary years are just such I feel like they're really important for their foundation, so I have no problem slow poking my way through um, these years. So anyway, she's on level one here. For math, we are using the app Splash Math um, quite a bit, and we're using the app iXL or the program. Um, we're using the programs Splash Math and iXL. Um, for her with math, but then in addition to that we also throw in um, This brainy book of addition and subtraction. She's been doing exceptionally well in this book So we're working our way through and are probably about a little bit more than halfway through it I really like those brainy books. I very very particular about the type of um workbooks that I like and those I highly recommend. I like them a lot. Um, these came with 
a curriculum that I had in the very beginning of homeschool. That's how you know how long I've had these. Um, but I refuse to let them completely go. I don't want to toss them in the trash. They were, you know, a few pages were done here and there, but I just refuse to throw them away because I feel like it's wasteful. So we pick them up and use them when we can. Um, it just so happens that yesterday we used it quite a bit to work on some money stuff with Savannah and that went really well. So I'm just going to slowly work my way through this one with her. This one is the complete book of math. Again, this is one of the things that came with the very first curriculum that I purchased that didn't really work out so well for us, but I still use a lot of the resources that were included. Um, so yeah, I had this for my oldest and now she is to the point where she can complete you know, quite a bit of the pages. So whenever it fits in well, we just pick this up and work our way through until it is complete because I refuse to just toss it out. Next up, I'll go through Bible. Okay. Um, now for the things that are elective, if you want to call them, um, we do a lot of that stuff together. Um, so I'm going to do separate videos that covers what we're using for Bible for all three, what we're using for geography for all three, what we're using for science for all three, but I thought it would still be helpful to just go ahead and, and include their portions in the video that pertains to them, if it makes any sense. <laughs> so um, for her in Bible, you've seen these before. They're just the Holy Moly books, the Saul Meets Jesus. Um, Noah's Ark, the story of King David. So these have lasted quite a bit of time in our homeschool and I just keep on passing them down. So um, Savannah will be working her way through these as they fit in. And then I am a fan of using picture books for all things, but um, definitely with Savannah and the whole kindergarten um, first grade age. So um, books like these, Joseph and His Coat of Many Colors, Noah's Ark, Jonah and the Whale, I think they're amazing for using as, you know, curriculum starting points. So she is going to just be rereading these over and over again, just familiarizing herself with them, painting some of the pictures out of them, color matching and things like that. We just try to find as many creative ways as possible to use the resources that we have. So that was all upside down, wasn't that weird? <laughs> now let's talk science. So of course she's gonna be working through unit studies with her brothers as well, but things that are specific to her, um, which I like to call optional things that maybe if she's not really feeling what we're currently doing in our unit, um, I need to have other options for her to be able to choose something different that she might be interested in. So that's where stuff like this comes into play when I need to have days where she needs, you know, she just needs her own little thing to do. Um, I like to have resources that help me to cater to them individually. So she is going to be working through the nature notebook, not from cover to cover, but instead using it as a resource. And then we're going to be working our way through the Discovery Kids Factivity books. I've had these from the very beginning, you guys. And like I said in the very beginning, we do not um, write in these books. We use them um, to teach from and then we complete a lot of the activities inside of our notebooks. That way I could continue to use them year after year. That is what we have done and we love it so I have these four that are just as good as new and are going to work just the same so um I don't know I feel really good about that <laughs> oh the next thing history so again, like I said, she's going to be doing history right along with the boys, but just in case there are things that she's not really following along the same or she needs a little bit of um, extra things that are just for her, um, I love using picture books and books like these, resource books like these. Like this little leader's book is so cute. <laughs> It's so cute. So just being able to open it up to one page, reading her some of the story, maybe having her um, draw 
Katherine Johnson herself and color her herself. Um, yeah, I just think that it's the perfect way to use things like this. Just make sure you're working your way through it. So I have the little leaders, bold women in black history. Books like these, picture books, um, that really just are a soft introduction for little kids to historical events and figures and things. Um, Malala's Magic Pencil, The Youngest Marcher, Looking at Lincoln. So these are some of the ones that we own, but all the rest of them will probably come from our library. Um, so we love using stuff like that with Savannah. And then the very last thing I have is just geography. So these are her little additions to our geography courses. So she has one of the coloring books. This is just a 3D coloring book and it includes some of the cities in the world. So she'll just be able to go through and doodle and draw and color and I'll pick out the one that corresponds to whatever um, the boys and I are covering. So as you can see here, these are the table of contents. It includes the CN Tower in Toronto, the Statue of Liberty in New York, Central Park in New York. So as we cover different places, if any of these might apply, then she is going to, um, then I'm going to grab this book and give it to her. And this will be what she'll work on while we're working through other things in geography. So the 3D coloring cities. And then I'm also using the Discover the World puzzle and play. I got these from Target a year or so ago. And anytime we are talking about if we're, you know, deep into our geography lesson with the boys and I'm just losing her, having her go and put together her puzzle and then finding where, you know, the place that we're talking about is totally geography, you guys. <laughs> Sometimes you just need something to keep them busy, but um, things that you can use over and over that they can learn to master and hopefully will help to ingrain the bits of information into their mind. Um, I just encourage questions and things. Like I said so many times before, um, sometimes it feels like when I communicate how we do things, it seems so complicated, but it's really not. It's really simple. It's just a lot of retraining your brain to... Um, to think of things that would create a lasting effect instead of memorize this information so you can do well and then you know they risk forgetting it next week which happens right um yeah that happens so anyway that is what she's going to be using to add to geography and that is what my kindergartner is using the only thing i have not shown is um, her cooking for her for our culinary course she's doing a baking she has a baking cookbook which I think she left in the car so um, I'll probably show that to you when I do a separate video on our culinary unit or our culinary course and how that is going I'll show you that there so I hope you guys like this video just showing you what my baby girl is using this year um, a lot of these things will work our way through plenty of it and some of them might be left over some of them will redo again next year thank you guys so much for watching this video if you have any questions feel free to leave it in the comments um, in the comment section below make sure you're subscribed and like this video if you enjoyed it and I will see you in the next video bye